So I grew up in Albany, New York, on a little street called Tudor Road, and not such a big house either. My dad ran a, a small liquor store, and my mom was a homemaker and took care of me and my sister. And you know, I, I really don't think I had had a clue what my future would look like. I'd like to say that the reason I I studied chemical engineering is because I really knew from the beginning that that would be what I'd want to do, but that wouldn't be true. I went to Cornell as an undergraduate, and I had to make a decision at the end of the year what I was going to major in. And I was so bad at all the things that, that, you know, the physics and all those kinds of things that I just kept eliminating all the things that involved that, like engineering physics or mechanical engineering. And, and I did like chemistry, and so I, I, I chose that. So it was almost a process of elimination. After I went to Cornell, I went to MIT. And when I was at MIT, pretty much all my friends went to the oil companies. They, they had high paying jobs and, and they kept coming to campus and then they invited me to you know, go to the different oil companies. So I did these interviews, but then when I fly back to Boston and I think to myself, do I really want to spend my life doing that? I, I, I didn't know exactly what I did want to do, but I wanted to have an impact on people's lives. So I decided after getting a good 20 job offers to not accept any of them. So I started to think what other way could I help people with my chemical engineering education and I thought about medicine. So I wrote to a lot of hospitals and medical schools, but they didn't write me back. Then one day I walked into the lab and one of the older a scientist there said that there's a surgeon in Boston named Judah Folkman, and they said sometimes he hires unusual people. So I wrote to him and he was nice enough to call me up and I went over there and he offered me a job. I learned so much, it was almost like being a kid in a candy shop. I'd see all these different problems that uh, clinicians were trying to solve. And because I was an engineer, I looked at it differently and, and came up with solutions that that, that they weren't coming up with, with that, uh, that in some cases were better. I started thinking about, well, why can't you do chemical engineering design? Why can't you ask the question, what do you really want in a material, biomaterial from an engineering standpoint, chemistry standpoint, um, biology standpoint, and design it from scratch? That ended up being a very different way of thinking and it led to new materials that we would then synthesize and design and a number of them have become, you know, widely used and have led to new treatments for brain cancer and other diseases. One of the things that I'm very proud of is the drug delivery work going back to the, you know, 1970s, where we showed that you could deliver large molecules from tiny particles. And that has ended up playing a role in a lot of different medicines, including even today uh, with the COVID vaccine, if you didn't have tiny particles, uh, in this case lipid nanoparticles, the messenger RNA vaccines wouldn't work. I've made the comment, do something that can change the world rather than do something incremental. Incremental to me is taking something that's already been developed and improving it a little bit. On the other hand, creating messenger RNA therapeutics, which had really never been done before, messenger RNA vaccines, I mean, that as a whole new class of vaccines, a whole new class of medicines, you know, that is changing the world uh, and I hope will continue to change the world for the better. To be successful, I think you have to dream big dreams. I think you also need to recognize that you're gonna probably run into a lot of obstacles if you do that. And then I think you have to have a lot of perseverance, whatever those obstacles are to, you know, push their way through them to walk through walls if they have to, to get the things that they believe in and care about to work. I've failed far, far more than I've succeeded. No chemical engineering department in the country would hire me. Um, I got my first nine grants rejected, but I believed in what I was doing. I, I thought it was important, so I kept trying. I guess I've always seen my purpose is to help people. I mean, I, I've gotten a lot of satisfaction from that, helping people by teaching and thinking about research that could make a difference. And finally, you know, inventing things and trying to bring those things to the world. If I had to give one piece of advice about what career path to study, I, I, I think the most important thing is to follow your passion. That, that's probably the single most important thing I can think of. To young people who are thinking about being an engineer, I'd say is, is just so important for for people's health, for public policy, for energy, for 
global warming, for all kinds of issues that the world faces and will continue to face. I mean, the world would be incredibly different without engineers. And I think because of engineers, we have things throughout our lives that have you know, transformed society, knowing and seeing firsthand sometimes that we could improve people's lives, that certainly makes a big difference to me.